from one mu- from one musician to the other. <laughs> Speech impediment. <laughs> Sorry about that. I didn't mean to be insensitive, but I have one. So here we are. everyone thanks very much cool thank you thanks glad to have you here at the fret buzz i'm greg pierce here at the buzz the fret buzz getting some work done on the guitar today this is probably the most important lesson on chords you're ever gonna uh ever gonna have um, if you can commit the following concepts four of them to memory um, there's not much you won't be able to do uh, as far as chords are concerned, let's jump right in, shall we? It takes a little bit of working knowledge of intervals to make this lesson really uh, happen. Hey, Basset Hound. So, here in this lesson, everyone, we're going to take an approach where we're not uh, specifically in any one key. Uh, but it's going to be really important to make, um, to make chords happen no matter what key you're in, right? So, um, let's talk about major first. A major chord is constructed by taking the, uh, a root note, right? We establish a root note, and then on top of the root, uh, we're gonna add a third and a fifth, all right? So when I say third and fifth, I mean alphabetically. Like if we start on D, as an example, right? Um, a third higher than that, D, E, F, some kind of F. We don't know what kind of F yet. We're, we're just in the beginning stages, right? And a fifth, D, E, F, G, A. A is the fifth. Okay, so um, a fifth of some sort. We have perfect fifths, diminished fifths, augmented fifths. Um, similarly, with thirds, we have minor thirds, major thirds, potentially a diminished third um, in, some, in some, some cases. Let's talk about major first. Once you have a root note, uh, when you go to a third higher, specifically, it's a major third. A major third is two whole steps. What does that look like on the guitar? We have a D. And here's a third higher, right? Two whole steps higher than D is F sharp. But you can't do this when you're playing a chord because you only hear one note at a time. So we have to take this F sharp and put it somewhere else on the instrument, right? We can go here, right? We can play the F sharp lower than the D. We can go two octaves higher to the seventh fret of the B string, to the second fret of the E string. Um, you can get crazy, you play open D high F sharp, like way up on the fingerboard. Good grief, so many possibilities. So then, once you establish the third, um, we go a minor third, all right, one and a half steps higher than the third to achieve the fifth. So in a major chord, you have root three and five, but specifically the distances between those notes are a major third, then a minor third. No matter what key you're in, no matter what sort of planet you think you're on, a major chord, at least as far as uh, uh, earthlings are concerned, is gonna be constructed of a root note, then you go a major third higher, and then a minor third higher, and you're golden. Major chord. So the greatest thing about this is that you don't have to have um, the notes appearing in that order. Um, like root three, five, you can put the fifth in the bass, like A, then a D, then an F sharp. That's nuts, you know, I would never finger like that. How about this? Um, fifth, third, uh, root note D, third is uh, is F sharp. Whoever plays a D major chord like that with all kinds of space. It sounds beautiful, right? It's orchestral almost. There's a, there's a lot of room between this A and this D. More than an octave, right? Much more. An octave plus a fourth to be precise. Ah, uh, glorious. Going on. So when you have a minor chord, all y'all, um, it's, it's a similar sort of concept. You have a root note, third and fifth, but the distances between the notes is now changed. So I'm gonna keep the D the same as my root note. Uh, a minor third now higher than, than D is F, and then a major third higher than F is A. So between the root and the third 
of a minor chord, we have a minor third now, one and a half steps. And between the uh, third and the fifth of a minor chord, it's a major third, two steps. So in comparing that to the previous chord, the major chord, the intervals have switched, right? Um, before we had major as the first interval, minor was second. Now when you're playing a minor chord, minor's first and major is second. A lot of folks know how to play D minor. Like this. Right? So here's my D, here's the F, the third, and here's A, the fifth. Play open D, perhaps as, a, as a, a, a second root note to beef up the chord. Maybe play an A. Maybe play another F in the bass. Good, good, good. Awesome. So let's start goofing with, with this one a little bit, perhaps. Um, how about playing the F, I don't know, here, right? Then an A, then a D. Still D minor. So is this. D, F, A. Right? D minor. Um, D, F, A. D minor. You guessed it. Good job, everyone. Uh, let's mess it up a little bit. Let's play the F in the bass, then a D, then an A. That's saucy, right? Ah. Lots of space in that one too. Sixth here, and then from D to A, a fifth. Open voicing, baby. Open voicing. Couple more. Couple more chords, you guys. So, uh, diminished chords, all right? In a diminished chord, you have two stacked minor thirds. One and a half steps between each interval, in other words. So if I have D again, what's a minor third higher than D, everyone? Uh, oh, all right, F, good. So D to F, and a minor third higher than F, one and a half steps higher, is A flat. Can't call it G sharp, because G sharp would be the fourth note higher than D, right? We have to be alphabetically specific for this to really make sense from one, mu from one musician to the other. <laughs> Speech impediment? <laughs> Sorry about that. I didn't mean to be insensitive, but I have one, so here we are. Um, so you might be saying to yourself, self, let's, uh, let's, let's get some diminished chords happening here. How about um, D, F, A flat? Ooh, oh boy. How about this one? Uh, we can bar the first fret for an A flat and an F, put the D in the middle. Diminished chords can be moved in ascending thirds, um, minor thirds specifically. Three frets at a time. Better said, perhaps, for those who like to visualize the fingerboard. And the chord remains the same. It's the same deal. It would stay D diminished. You'd have to have uh, a seventh on there also, which you would achieve by just going another minor third higher than the fifth, which would be... Uh, Right, C flat. <laughs> Good. C flat, everybody. Woo! Oh boy. How about another voicing for that? D, um, D A flat and F. D F A flat. F A flat D. It's a little more space in it this time. Now we have a tritone between this D and this A flat, and this pinky's playing a high F. Oh. Same thing. One more chord for us. Um, this one's going to be called an augmented chord, and in a similar fashion to the diminished chord where we had two stacked minor thirds, uh, now for augmented we're going to play uh, two stacked major thirds. Kind of nice. Interesting conceptually. Uh, cons Yep, surely. So D, major third higher than D, is F sharp, two whole steps again. Uh, and then two whole steps or major third higher than F sharp is A sharp. Um, you can also think about uh, augmented chords as being like a major chord, but you raise the fifth. You're augmenting the interval, making it larger in other words, right? 
So two stacked major thirds, everyone. Two of them. Uh, D, F, A sharp. It's D, F sharp, A sharp. Yeah. Kind of Pink Floydy, right? Kind of, kind of Beatley, Beatle Floydish. Some other voicings for um, for the uh, augmented chords. How about this uh, A sharp here? This uh, A sharp, F sharp, then D. Right, resolving to G major. I'm um, going to augment it to minor. Ah, I like this a lot. I like it a lot. So definitely some very, very cool things that we can, that we can do with just four chord types, right? Um, the usage, the, the way that I was just using the augmented chord was as a, a way of creating tension at the fifth scale degree. Ordinarily, the, the five is, is a dominant chord, right? So if we take the dominant chord, um, the five chord, which typically is major in a major key, and then we play augmented in its place, it creates a little bit, of, a little bit of tension that uh, resolves uh, thusly: um, D, F sharp, A sharp, common tone, right? This D is going to stay the same. F sharp is going to resolve up to G. B flat or A sharp, A sharp is going to resolve up to a B. So we have like this sort of tension, right? Resolution. <laughs> I hope you guys got something out of this. Um, as ever, uh, we make our best effort here to put a new lesson up on the Fret Buzz once a week uh, here on YouTube and on the site itself. Lots of, lots of jam tracks, um, lots of other things you'll love. Music manuscript for each lesson. Riffs du jour. I gotta get. I have to get on that riff du jour thing, man. Because riff du jour suggests that you're doing a new riff every day. I'm doing one like every week. It's not enough. Kind of be inspiring to each other, right? Throw ideas back and forth so we can all become more proficient on this instrument of ours. All right, everyone, be good to each other. <laughs> <laughs>